seems to me like the, uh, Marilyn is uh, the caboose trying to pull the rest of the train. <laughs> you know, I don't see how this is going to work for the state. Uh, I share my concerns with uh, Councilman Hodge on that. And um, I have deep concerns about, uh, about the idea of, okay, moving people to here, <coughs> taking people from there and moving them there, uh, creating equity in economic <coughs> development, um, this sort of thing. Um, I really don't believe that a top-down approach is going to get our desired um, uh, you know, um, solution. Um, there, there have been so many regulations that have been put forth in, in the last how many years that have just been doing nothing but hampering down. Um, and tolls, you know, I, I, feel like, I feel like I have to pay going out of my county and coming into my county on both ends. And, and we are, we're in a very unique position here. We tried to, to tell the MDBA, you know, that, that we, have, we have some uh, unique concerns here about this. There are people who have doctors over the, over the uh, Susquehanna in, in Habitat Grace, and they, they, you know, if, if we keep having rates going up now, yeah, they, they, they did compromise with us. But I think, I, I really feel we should have the right to leave our county free in at least one area, you know, of, of the county. So, uh, without having to, you know, go around. But, at any rate, I, I think I made my points. And, and once again, I thank you uh, for taking the time to listen to my concerns uh, for what they're doing. And, uh, uh, Thanks. Thank you for taking do you, Would you mind telling us your name, ma'am? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I'm Valerie Falcioni uh, from Northeast Maryland. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Others? Yes, sir. Uh, I had uh, several repudiations, uh, and I'll start from the top. Uh, first of all... I'm oh, sorry. Could you identify uh, yourself? I'm sorry. I'm Harold Mechanic, and I live in Elk Neck. Sure, say it again, Mr. Harold Mechanic. Thank you. Elk Neck, Maryland. Yep, Cecil you. County. Joe Hill would be the uh, uh, set the, that Southeast Pennsylvania uh, Transit Authority. So, uh, uh, Mayor Fasson, uh he's trying to make that connection, and, and uh, I, I actually agree with his attempt to make that connection. It's ludicrous that you can't uh, ride a commuter train from Baltimore to Philadelphia. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, the, the British being repulsed here at uh, uh, Elk Landing. Uh, I feel like uh, we're doing the same thing right now with this plan now. Uh, uh, Will Mapco, uh, I think uh, that is another waste of money, uh, five to eleven thousand dollars a mile. Uh, this spring, I traveled to Malvern, Pennsylvania, every day for two weeks, and there, uh, one of these trails intersected uh, Route 309 going into Malvern, which is much more populated than we are here. In, in those two weeks, I saw one bicycle on that uh, bike path. So I, I, I think that's a big waste of money. Uh, job opportunities in, in Baltimore, uh, <clears throat> I believe if you want to work, there's opportunities out there. I, I believe the job opportunities in the cities are a direct result of too many social safety nets. I had a, a conversation with a roofer yesterday, ironically, and I'm a floor man. So, I mean, there's your disparity. But uh, we both agree that if there's a, uh, an individual who approached us who wants to work, who would show up every day, who would be willing to work, either one of us would hire him in a minute. But, you know, we don't have that luxury. Everybody that wants to work for, with you or for you uh, wants to know what you can do for them, not the other way around. Uh, so I, I think, I think uh, uh, funnel of money and resources into urban areas and taking those resources from us in rural areas to do it is a waste of money. Uh, white population, uh, somebody mentioned white flight. Well, uh, this state has, has earned a national reputation for being a haven for illegal immigrants. I have a problem with that. Uh, I almost don't blame them at that point. Uh, one of the graphics turned into what some uh, the presenter described as a bunch of words. Well, I read those bunch of words and I found them objectionable. Okay, uh, resources. Uh, this state resists 
mining for natural gas. Our neighbors in West Virginia and Pennsylvania are, are digging laterally under our state and, and taking our resources. Uh, that's a missed opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, transportation investment, the intercounty connector, and it's uh, budget bloat. Those are 30 words up here in this county. We, we had to fund the intercounty connector, and uh, it does nothing for us. Uh, Baltimore region uh, stops. It showed Harford County, and then uh, it also stops at the Sassafras River. Okay, we feel like we're a moat here. We're, we're an island separated from the state, who, who's just targeted as a resource by the rest of the state uh, for programs like this that benefit, you know, the urban areas. Uh, you know, we're getting tired of it up here, and we almost want to secede to Delaware. You know, we're attached by land to Delaware. They'd love to have us, I'm sure. Uh, I'll open up the floor. I don't, I don't want to take up everybody's time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Others, yes, ma'am. Hi, Mary Rogers from Elton. Uh, you went into great detail about Charles County and how they are not complying with the uh, requirements of Plan Maryland. Uh, what is the bottom line for Charles County if they, in fact, do not comply? Um, well, as you heard several times, the, the county can adopt any plan it wants to. Um, so the state has limited or frankly no direct tools to do anything about it. Now, um, it may, um, and this is one of the things we'll need to figure out to do about that plan, what effects it has on some of the funding they get for various programs because the state's charged with you know, implementing its, its, its programs. Um, efficiently, effectively, and so some programs that work there now may not make sense if the county's stated formal policy in this part of the county are not what they have been for a long time, which is to raise a question of resource protection um, category and the agricultural um, category. The other part of that is that um, I don't know how much we talked about this, was that the more urbanized part of the county, Waldorf, is an unincorporated community in the northern part of the county. Um, they want light rail, um, and we're very excited about that. They want transit-oriented development and that type of thing. Um, they have a lot of commuter buses from that part of the county, but they're, they're far enough out that they're not planning for light rail anytime soon. The Department of Transportation is committed to a detailed study to look at that. And um, you know, the analysis indicates that if they spread the growth out over the place, they'll make it less likely that light rail would work in Baltimore. So the short answer to your question is there's no direct thing the state can do, and there's considerations the state can take going forward, but not been there before with the counties. But but the state would definitely withhold funds for anything else. I, will, I can't say definitely. We haven't been here before, and we have to see what plan they actually pass. So there's no clear black and white trigger if they, if they do this. I mean, even though the uh, uh, plan Maryland is law, uh, I don't know. I don't know how they could not comply. Well, the, the, the number one plan Maryland is not a law; it's a policy, uh, and. Um, the, the issues going on in the Charles County plan are so basic. Their their plan Maryland um, isn't really even part of the discussion. They're going to be blunt. I mean, again, they're taking two land use categories that have their plan for 20 to 30 years, and they're wiping them out in this draft. So it's a draft right now, and as the chairman said here, it's going to the um, county commissioners, or commissioner form county. Um, it's going to them tomorrow. From the planning commission for their consideration. I mean, I did not read the whole thing like Valerie did, but you know, and I don't plan, I don't pretend to understand the whole thing. But it seems to me that the, that the state would have would have a bottom line if somebody didn't comply. So that's why I asked the question. For better or worse, we really don't. To be, to be. Okay. Um, I was just wondering. Something. Thank you. Thank you. Others. Well, um, let me thank everybody.
everybody for your patience. And thank you for so many of you for being here. And particularly, please, let me thank the executive and council. This is extraordinary. Thank you for this generous time to allow us to be here and to stay here with us for hours. Yeah. So we really appreciate it. And we look forward to working with you in the future. So thank you for hosting us. Is there a motion to adjourn the commission? No, no, no. Second. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. What do I say?